What about Jake Dennis? He's currently eighth quickest in this session. Needs to get into the top four, and he doesn't improve. He's out of the group stages of qualifying, Jake Dennis. So it's Roland, Van Dorn, Cassidy, and De Vries that make it through into the duels. 25 one hundredths of a second separating four drivers. Evans improves over in third place in time, but stays third quickest. What about Jean-Luc Verne? Pole yesterday. Is he going to be out of qualifying? He is. He doesn't make it into the duels for round 12. Let's get confirmation of the results from Group B then. Jake Hughes, Antonio Felix da Costa, Mitch Evans and Norman Natto are the four drivers that will progress forwards into the duels. Well, let's have a look then. This is the lineup for the quarterfinals. Nick Cassidy versus Stoffel Van Dorn. Nick de Vries versus Oliver Rowland. Mitch Evans and Antonio Felix da Costa. Norman Natto and Jake Hughes. Quarterfinal one then. Nick Cassidy versus Stoffel Van Dorn. 84% reckon it's going to go the way of the Kiwi in the Jaguar. What about Van Dorn? Can he close up in this final sector? He's just under a tenth of a second shot of the time set by Cassidy, clunks it over the curves, snap of oversteer though, that'll cost him a tenth of a second or so, but he's been catching in this final sector, he comes across the line, and he knocks out Nick Cassidy by six thousandths of a second, Stoffel Van Dorn with a superlative final couple of sectors, does manage to get the better, he was a tenth and a half clear of Cassidy in that final sector in fact. Quarter final two, Nick De Vries versus Oliver Rowland, 86% reckon it will go the way of Rowland. Could Nick De Vries be on for a spot in the semi-finals in his first ever visit to the Jewels in 2024? Around the final quarter we go, Rowland's going to have to have the mother and father of all final sectors, kicks up dust, he tries to gain time, but it's not enough, and Nick De Vries in Mahindra manages to knock out Oliver Rowland, absolutely fantastic. Quarterfinal three, Mitch Evans versus Antonio Felix da Costa. So final couple of corners then, left clattering over it for Mitch Evans and da Costa as they come to the timing line. It's going to be very close between them, but da Costa does it. A 1-13, 7-5-2. So that's another championship contender out of qualifying in the quarterfinal. Quarterfinal four, Norman Natto versus Jake Hughes then. Natto out of the final corner and across at the timing line. What is the score on the door for him? It's a 13-9. Not bad. And again, a bit more rear instability here for Jake Hughes. He's been able to continue the advantage. He comes out of the final corner. Does he knock out Norman Natto? Yes, he does. Jake Hughes through into the semi-finals. A round of applause from Neon McLaren and from Ian James. Drivers started. We're now down to four. Nick De Vries versus Stoffel Van Dorn in semi-final one. Semi-final two will be Jake Hughes versus Antonio Felix da Costa. We've lost some big hitters from the quarterfinals, including Nick Cassidy, Oliver Rowland, and also Mitch Evans. Well then, ready to go for semi-final one. Nick De Vries versus Stoffel Van Dorn. Mahindra versus DS Penske. Final sector now awaits Van Dorn building on the advantages that he's built over Nick De Vries as we come through to the final few corners. And again, more rear instability there for Nick De Vries. So Van Dorn has had a good lap time here. Is he going to be enough to knock out Nick De Vries? It certainly is. Two tenths of a second. And Van Dorn goes through into the finals then. He knocks out the Mahindra driver in the semi finals. Over to semi final two then. Jake Hughes versus Antonio Felix da Costa. McLaren versus Tag Heuer Porsche. Hughes comes out of the final corner across the timeline at 13.865. That's a handy lap time there for the Briton in the Neon McLaren, but can the Costa match it? He's about eight tenths, eight hundredths of a second shy, nearly up to a tenth of a second or so. But if he has a good final sector, he could be ready to spoil Hughes's party. Out of the final corner we go for the DAC attack then across the timing line. Hughes has done it. A 13.846 for Hughes, a 13.980 for Antonio Felix da Costa, sees Jake into the finals for the second time this season. And into the finals, it is Stoffel Van Dorn in the DS Penske and Jake Hughes in the Neil McLaren, who will be going head-to-head -head in the fight for pole position. Very close in terms of the 47-53 predictor votes. Van Dorn having a little wobble there as we go back towards the apex of two and now down, a big drop. The cameras don't really do it justice on the way into turn three. Again, both of them taking a tighter line. All looking fairly neat and tidy so far. Stoffel Van Dorn has got the edge, though. Van Dorn with the early advances, as you say. About a tenth of a second or so, but Hughes is catching, coming in towards this second sector. Deep on the apex there for turn six at Stoffel Van Dorn. So let's see...
how it looks coming in towards turn seven and turn eight. This is where we've seen drivers losing time with snaps of oversteer. Hughes is closing still, and he's now ahead of Stoppel Van Dorn in this second sector. This is going to be an almightily close fight for pole position as we come through turn eight into the left-handed kink of turn nine. Van Dorn under pressure. Hughes building out the advantage, aiming for his second pole position of 2024. Just two more corners now remaining as we come through into turn 12. Out of the corner we go, across the timing line, Hughes versus Van Dorn. It's so close, one thousandth of a second in it, and Jake Hughes does it and takes pole position by the tightest margin we've ever seen in <laughs> Formula E. Jake Hughes is on top for the second time in 2024. That will do.